I'm just going to say it right now. I was busy this week. Like, insanely busy. It all started when I was at my uh, geode, uh, harvesting some geodes, when suddenly I had an incredible idea. I would give myself the biggest task possible. <laughs> I decided I was going to make a bed and breakfast inn, while also upgrading everything that I know. <laughs> so that meant decorating the front of my, well, it is now the front of my base. This cave that I lived in was going to become the, the biggest the biggest build I think I've ever done, rivaling even that of, well, uh, the floating island of last season. This, this base um, was going to look like a resort when I was done with it. At least that was my goal. So after adding a few fronts to the house uh, to get a few, well, I used deep slate here because I wanted to get uh, some more of the 1.18 blocks into the actual, into my actual builds. They're new blocks. I need to learn how to build with them. All right. <laughs> so yeah, I started connecting this little cave entrance to my actual house because there had been a hole there for a while, and I just needed to give it a reason to be there. Anyways started looking nice um, had some spruce out front and I started making a tree farm did a bit of uh, terrain editing uh, out front terraforming yeah and made it sort of oh yeah I I had to I had to take down a ton of trees uh, but I'm not talking about here this are just a few that I had to cut down for my second entrance to the base which was to my idea room see how I have this little window leading to my idea room. I wanted to make it look less flat and have more <clears throat> pronounced features. So I did. Um, oak and uh, deep slate. I, I don't know why I settled on these, but I did. And I gotta say, if I knew how to build better, probably would have looked better. But I don't know how to build better yet, so that's how it looks. Anyways, this is how it looks. Um, it's got a bit of a some uh, steps leading up. Um, by steps, I just mean less of an incline and more of a cliffside. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I had to survey the land to make sure I knew what I was doing because this was a huge project, and I decided to go all out. No joke. I decided to level multiple parts of this kind of like a Chinese rice paddy um, got my super smelter up and running so I could do more stone terraforming managed to get a ton of stone and I gotta say this one this design is pretty efficient <laughs> now it doesn't uh, continue to put coal into the furnaces but it does give me a lot of stone very quickly anyways this is my idea wall uh, and yes, eventually, I will start a war. But that's not at this point in time, so don't worry about it just yet. <laughs> now, I managed to get my, uh, my uh, furnace thing that you saw out there done, so I took it off the wall. I checked in to see if I had any other ideas that I had finished or that I could start like I have a set so here's the thing about me if you don't know who I am Creeper Jones here um sorry should have said that Creeper Jones 651 here welcome back to another episode of Craftology I get very distracted and that's just how I am <laughs> so you'll see I just do some random projects like this I had this chicken farm made, I believe, last episode, but it was never going to stay like this. See, I've discovered something about this mod pack. Um, we have more foods enabled, so I needed some hoppers. So I went to my iron farm, grabbed some iron and some chests, made a couple hoppers. And by a couple, I mean a few, because I was going to need to cover the bottom of the chicken coop with these uh, and have them lead into a furnace. Now, like I said, um, <clears throat> there's a more foods mod added to this uh, mod pack. 
And in that mod pack, there's a recipe called a fried egg, which you can create with a furnace. And I was going to automate the process. Anyways, I got tired of that, went over to finish terraforming. I could never seem to stay on one project for a, uh, a long amount of time. So yeah, I ended up making this, uh, this cliff here. And this was where I was going to be putting the bed and breakfast in. And I'll just let you view this time lapse and whenever uh, something else comes up, I will inform you of what's going on. Now I went back to my mind because I honestly needed more deep slate, so I got that. Cobble deep slate. It's definitely something I will be using a lot in the future. It gives that nice contrast. Had a red-eyed zombie, took care of that real quick. And tried to get this uh, path going down to the bee farm, but it was a lot tougher than I thought, and I kept having to readjust this numerous times. And I used slabs here to mark out where it was going. It was it was going to be sort of like a uh, an incline. Yeah, I got tired of falling in the river right here, so I decided to put a uh, little cover over it. Boats could still go through, but I wouldn't fall in. Anyways, this is where it gets interesting. Uh, I have my uh, riches wall here. <clears throat> I added some more weeping vines, and this has turned into a, far a mini farm here. But check this out. This is where I, I make use and make a, uh, this is where I will be snagging the food I sell at the bed and breakfast inn that I will be making. Made a little pit here so all the chickens could file out, pour out, because they were literally pouring out. <laughs> and uh, added the, uh, the hoppers. These would, like I said, these would collect all the eggs from the chickens. And yeah, uh, made a, I was missing one hopper at the end of this, which was kind of disappointing, so I went off and uh, into the, my mine, found a geode, another one. So now I have two geodes uh, where I know exactly where they are. And uh, yeah, this is under my base, apparently, so. You know, what? I'm just gonna come out and say it. Both of these geodes that I own and know the location to are under my base. And it's very easy for me to get to. So yeah, grab some iron from down in my mines and decided to quickly make that hopper that I was needing. As you can see, I have a very cluttered inventory and I need to sort that out in the near future. Not today, not this week, because this week's almost over. <laughs> but yeah. I got... Uh, I just want you to see how effective this is. Um, like I said, I get distracted very easily, so. <clears throat> You'll see I'll be doing a few projects simultaneously here. Pulled all of the chickens in, and I got back to work on my, well, the front of my house. I, I needed to, uh, create a way to get up and down this area easily without having to waste a ton of my, <laughs> my hunger. So after moving this, this double chest over and funneling all the items back into it, I created a slab staircase out of stone. It fit the aesthetic of where it was, it was a nice natural feel, which is what I was kind of going for, and I created a forest. This might have been a bad idea because I spent an entire, I think it was like two hours, well I think it might have been one hour, but it felt like two, where I just uh, hammered these uh, oak trees. <laughs> As you can see, it's a giant wall of oak. And I'm not gonna lie, it looks nice. You can see here, it actually looks really nice. It's a nice little walk down. You can walk right into the forest. And uh, I think I might replant these, because I did eventually take these down. Uh, <clears throat> I might replant them, but not as thick as they were before, because I still need to see the the, uh, the trader's shop. Which, 
let me add, um, is now, it was previously owned by an elemental uh, named the Trader. The Trader's gone and uh, he's gone off traveling, uh, so we might never see him again. So now the crafters get to uh, own it. Oh yeah, I annihilated this mountain. Check this out, I leveled the entire thing. Like I said, this was going to be a flat land. This is where I was going to make my bed and breakfast in. Anyways, like I was saying, that uh, building behind me, that was going to be owned by the wealthiest uh, crafter on the realm for any given time. So basically, we can decide, yeah, we want to uh, own that. And it's like, okay, let's prove you're the wealthiest. Everyone pulls out their riches and proves they're the wealthiest person on the realm. And then they own it. That's just how the, the deed works. But yeah, this this natural uh, cave type thing, I can't tell it. Well, <clears throat> I hope it worked out. Uh, anyways, the back of the cave wasn't going to be seen too much because there was going to be this this uh, bed and breakfast. And oh yeah, I called it the golden egg. Last uh, series, I we had a tavern called the the golden apple. Uh, and at this season, I wanted it to have a successor. I wanted it to be, well, I wanted it to have, uh, <laughs> fried eggs were literally going to be the, the food I, I supplied here. So the golden egg just fit perfectly with the golden theme. And uh, also I plan on selling uh, bacon here, because uh, that's also another modded recipe we can make. And it just fits nicely. Basically, people can rent this place out. Oh yeah, I decided to mine for diamonds. And I gotta say, I was very lucky when it came to this mining trip. Because I didn't get five, not six. You can see in the bottom, I already had like eight diamonds at this point. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I got really lucky. I think at the end I had somewhat like... Actually, before I tell you, go ahead and leave a comment down in the description. No, you can't write a comment in the description. Write a comment down below stating how many diamonds you think I'll get at the end of this mining trip. Go ahead, I'll wait. <clears throat> I'm curious to see how many you think I got. Oh yeah, I found this slime. I found the slime. That was the only large slime I found. And I honestly don't know how to get more to spawn, so I'll probably have to look into that. Because if that's a slime chunk, that's big news. And, uh... Yeah. Oh, so on my ideas wall, there is something called... There is... <clears throat> okay, if I can ever talk properly. Okay. Let me rephrase that. This massive pit I'm making is, like, three blocks tall. And... It just so happens that I could make a functioning back rooms in this <laughs> if I have enough birch and sandstone. And that's what I plan to do, because that was on my idea wall. Anyways, we're coming up to the end of this mining trip, and at the end of it, I had a whopping 34 diamonds. That's a lot from one trip. I could make a few diamond blocks and have some to spare. But yeah, put all the deep slate away, and uh, I decided to add a little bit more greenery um, but I needed to resupply on my eggs. So I went down to my employees only pet beyond this point, uh, egg farm. And, uh, I got some fried eggs, grabbed some coal, and it got them auto smelting again. I left the cave, and, yeah. I, oh yeah, I wasn't resuming boat thing that. I needed, I needed a lot of moss first, so I went over to the industrial district. Yep, that's where I live, right next to the road. Anyways, <laughs> went to the industrial district and gathered some moss. Now, I was going to use iron, but as you can see here, well, I waited around at the iron farm for a while. Just looking around, being bored as heck. After about five or six minutes, I was just like, I'm done. I'm just making what I have, what I can. And I got stuck with the call hope. Anyways, I went back to my moss patch and uh, spent a whole night uh, digging it. 
and I think I ended up with a, a fair decent amount, but it was not, uh, I was gonna need more. So I headed back to Creeper Cove, and uh, I, I realized that the, that mining it there was a little bit inefficient. And I needed to figure out a better way to, to mine this uh, moss. Uh, but yeah, headed over to the land, to uh, Creeper Cove, um, which I looked into, and apparently it's more of a lagoon. Uh, but yeah, went over here and decided to add a little bit more greenery to this this rocky sculpture I made. And I tried to blend it in to the background, but yeah, like I said, I didn't have enough wool. I underestimated uh, how much, not wool, moss. I underestimated how much moss I would need. I realized very quickly that I could not uh, mine moss that well at bedrock level, so I decided to start from the top and go down. I would place a moss block down in the center, uh, bone meal it, and then hit the top block with a hammer so that I would continually get like at least nine blocks of, of moss per hit. And yeah, once I'd done that, I continued over here. I realized uh, not long after this that I would need to um, <clears throat> bone meal the rest because <laughs> I did not have enough and I was not going mining for moss again. So I bone mealed the rest of the sculpture and made it blend in and we went back to the golden egg and had to... Uh, I was trying to figure out what kind of windows I would have or if I would have windows and judging by the height I decided no windows. Just no windows at all. I went with this sort of uh, nether block uh, theme uh, to give it sort of a, a little brightness in, in the cave. So let me know what to think. Oh yeah, <clears throat> found a pink sheep randomly spawned uh, right above my base. This is how you can tell uh, I, I've been working on this a while. Um, because not only did I find a pink sheep uh, this time, but I found a pink sheep later. And uh, that one I was able to keep. And like I'm saying, I did not, I could not keep this one. I was going to to find something to haul it to a pen with to keep it from despawning. I really didn't want it to despawn. I put it in the boat, hoping that would help. But after finding nothing, I went back to see if it was still there. And much to my disappointment, well. It, it just, you'll see. My disappointment was immeasurable. It was the first pink sheep I, well, actually, no, I think this is the second pink sheep I've seen total. The first one I think I've recorded on a video, but yeah. No pink sheep. Anyways, after that disappointment, I decided to take a break and go on an adventure flying throughout uh, the wonderful world of craftology. Uh, seeing new sites and structures that I've never seen before because they're from a mod pack, found bananas! And later on I learned that I could make banana trees by combining uh, banana seeds that I get while collecting bananas. And I could combine that with a jungle sapling to create a, a banana sapling, banana tree sapling. And that, I'm honestly, that's adding to the ideas board. I will be turning uh, an entire area in my industrial district into a plant-based farm. There's going to be uh, these banana trees, there's going to be uh, birch, oak, spruce, jungle, acacia. I'm going to try to collect as many blocks as I can, but yeah, I learned uh, something very important while traveling. Um, Oh yeah, I decided to see what was down here because it was so deep. I learned something very important while traveling on a bike. And that was, the further out I got, um, the more likely the, uh, the bike would crash. And I'm not saying that as in uh, the bike would hit something and break. No, I'm saying the mod for the bike would actually just break and the bike would freeze in midair. Um, <clears throat> and it seems to be something to do with these trees, these custom trees. Um, because if it, 
the flying bike runs into them, it seems to just break it. <clears throat> also, if I get too far out uh, from spawn on a flying bike, the mod will break as well. So, the bikes won't be trusted past um, <laughs> X or Z negative 500 or 600. Because I, I, that's a safe boundary I'm setting for myself, so I'll likely never be flying out this far again. <laughs> but it's a good thing I did um, this time, because bananas, they help a lot with hunger. I found out that Gamer Woody doesn't like bananas. Hey, to each one their own. I don't need bananas that often either. But I mean, in Minecraft, this stuff is great for, for your, your health. <laughs> Well, I guess saying that bananas aren't good for your health in real life is kind of a lie, but... Oh yeah! I had to mark the coordinates for this because this is a drowned spawner that I'd found. Not this. I, I discovered this on the side. But that little conduit looking thing over there, it was a drowned spawner. So eventually, if I can mark down those coordinates and fly over here again, um, I might be able to get a copper farm going and it will be super effective. So yeah, I think it was around here that I started to get bored of the sights I was seeing. There wasn't really much to see except ocean and jungle. At least that's what I'd noticed. I mean, I'd occasionally find these structures underwater, like the uh, this little tiki guy, but he only offered up one emerald block. And yeah, like I said, um, I actually discovered this pink sheep while Gamer Woody was on the realm. And... Uh, well, we had a fun time getting this pink sheep. Uh, he helped a lot with getting the wheat for it. And also, uh, well, let's just say I couldn't have done this without him because otherwise the sheep would have despawned in the whole process. Anyways, uh, he lured it up to the pen. <clears throat> oh yeah, pen. I, uh, I made a pen while he was leading it up here. I grabbed a, well, I, I grabbed some of the, the wood I had lying in my inventory and turned it into some fences. And this place, uh, I had planned to put, to put like a, a house here. Uh, so I made the pen small so I could put a house next to it. Couldn't figure out uh, why the, the sheep wanted to go away from the opening in the fence until we realized it was gonna hop over the, the crafting table to get in. I mean, it's, it's a roundabout way of getting in, but it eventually it got the message. Brought a bike over so Gamer Woody could get out of the pen because I didn't have carpet or shears. And I wanted to use the first uh, wool. I wanted to keep the first wool uh, of this sh this pink sheep uh, as a trophy, kind of like my uh, pig steps uh, disc and my first ancient degree and my first diamond and stuff like that. Anyways, managed to find a, a mate for this, uh, this pink sheep, uh, which we were uh, wondering what to call it. And uh, Gamer Woody. I was gonna call it a uh, dinner bone, but <clears throat> once we got the little one out, uh, it was time to uh, to try to name this dude. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie, if something happens to this this uh, the original pink sheep, I I'm gonna I'm gonna be sad. I'm gonna be super sad. Well, anyways, um, I was gonna call it dinner bone, but Gamer Woody he came up with something absolutely amazing. And uh, I had to find a, a name tag, right? I had to find a name tag. So I finally found one. And like I said, I was going to call it uh, Dinner Bone. But uh, Gamer Woody said, call it Pink Floyd. <laughs> so now we will have, we have a, a pink sheep named Pink Floyd. And... Uh, if I didn't break this bike, <laughs> he'd also have a bike named Pink Floyd. I can't believe I did that. I was trying to hop on the bike, but I ended up uh, clicking on the uh, the tag. So it was... Yeah, this, this, this white sheep, it really wanted to be called Pink Floyd for some reason. I almost, I almost, uh, yeah. But we got Pink Floyd, heck yes. Anyways, I gotta say, there has been so much that's happened, uh, in this video that I'm just gonna have to leave it off here. 
uh, because I've been very busy this week. Anyways, um, hope you have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, click the bell for notifications, and every time I upload a video, you'll know. Anyways, blessings to y'all, and until next time, peace out.